Should you train speed or power jumpers differently? Hello, I'm coach John Shepard and in this video I'm going to answer a question that's been sent in to the channel and that's from Vikas Gassane and he asks, should you train speed or power jumpers differently? I guess we initially have to make an understanding of what a speed jumper is, a power jumper is and what also potentially a strength jumper is. Well, somewhat obviously, a speed jumper relies on great velocity to achieve their distance. A power stroke strength type of jumper perhaps has less speed, but is able to create more force, rate of force development at the takeoff to create a good jump. Now, very often decathletes fall into that category. They may not be blessed with great speed, maybe 10.7, 10.8, but can jump over 8 metres. That's because they've got a lot of power and a lot of strength and are able to use that at takeoff. As a coach, I've coached various types of long jumpers, speed types and power types, but not so much strength types. With speed jumpers, you don't necessarily have to do the same amount of speed work somewhat obviously. You've got to treat them perhaps with kid gloves more so as well and enable them to maintain their speed. You don't want to overtrain their speed because they're naturally good sprinters. They've got that speed in the first place. You've got to marry that to the long jump run up and to the takeoff. Therefore, lots of work on the specifics of creating the right movements into the board to enable them to get into a position to take off. Very often, very quick sprinters are not able to long jump as they're not able to create the right positions and force application at the point of takeoff. Therefore, speed type jumpers need lots of takeoff work, in my opinion. I've also found with speed jumpers that weight training and plyometric work can be kept to a lesser extent than with a power strength type jumper. Again, because they're very able to react quickly to the track surface, this often translates into plyometrics. And I've found that being able to do lots of drop jumps and depth jumps is perhaps more beneficial for the speed jumper than for bounding for example. Bounding with its slower ground contacts I found to be more beneficial for the power strength type of jumper. They're perhaps more robust, they don't have quite the same numbers of type 2B fast twitch fibers and more of the type A, they're therefore able to handle a greater training load. So there's another element to training the different types of jumpers i.e. how much training each type can handle, as well as the specifics of the type of training that each type can handle. Another factor is the amount of running that you give the different types of jumpers. Many coaches will give the strength power type of jumper more running than the speed jumper. This is because they believe that those jumpers need to do more running, can handle more running, and the aim is that this will enable them to develop greater speed. Now that to me is a little bit of a reverse scenario in that you want to try to get greater speed out of any type of jumper, therefore giving them quality workouts working at top end speed is more beneficial regardless of the type of jumper. However, as I've indicated earlier, the speed jumper may not be able to complete as many repetitions as the strength power type jumper and that comes to speed work. That relates to speed work I should say. Therefore you've got to look at the types of running that you give to these types of jumpers. Yes you can work the power strength jumper to a greater extent than the speed jumper in my opinion but it's still trying to get that balance because ultimately running 200s, 150s for the power jumper is not necessarily going to improve their top end speed. Well, it, it won't. To develop their top end speed, I've found that you've got to get their leg frequency up in particular, as these guys are very comfortable at running 150s, for example, at a good pace, 
But when it comes to turnover, frequency, fly 10s, fly 20s, that's not their forte. So we need to address that. So that's a different way of training in a way that you need to emphasize some of the things that the type of jumper is not so ideally suited for. The speed jumper, however, can easily maintain their speed as long as they're given sufficient rest and recovery within the training sessions. Yes, you do need to get them to run over distance, shall we say, but I would only recommend up to about 120 meters and those distances run at 90% maximum speed. I'm talking here about in season. Out of season, yes, you're gonna run slightly slower and do some more build up work. But with the speed guys, you always wanna work at the top end of their speed and dip in and out of it. With the slightly slower power jumpers, you've got more scope to do more work and hopefully create more force, more power, that they can then translate into greater speed as well as take off power. What's also crucial is that all the qualities required for long jumping or triple jumping for that matter are developed, in my opinion, commensurately. You don't want to spend a lot of time working on speed or power generation in the weights room forgetting the other elements of training for example. Too much sprinting for example can improve sprint speed but if it's not allied to jumping practice then you're going to get a mismatch. You can come in too fast in a way and not be ready to take off to express sufficient force at the point of takeoff. That's why in my opinion it's necessary to train all the elements at the same time and of course the same applies to developing greater strength and power, which a strength power jumper will find easier to do. They can easily go down the wrong avenue, the wrong road, by developing more and more strength in the weights room, for example, and then that's not channeled into actually improving their jumping. So regardless of type of jumper that you are, or that you're coaching, you've got to create the right training environment mix and match all the ingredients so they feed into each other in order to produce optimum performance. Regardless of the type of jumper that you're coaching or you are, the fundamentals, however, stay the same. You need a great run-up. You need to be able to effect the last three strides into the board and the takeoff stride optimally. You need to do a lot of work on that. You need to be able to hold your drive off of the board then go into your mid-air action. So there's going to be a high technical element regardless as to whether you're a speed or a power jumper. There's a lot more to it than that in reality in terms of specifically planning micro cycles, training phases, etc. However, I hope that this overview of how you can look at training different types of jumper will be beneficial to you. If you've any questions, do leave them in the section below or through my other social media. And as usual, thanks for watching and good luck with any competitions you may have at the moment. If you would like information on the free lap timing system, which is accurate to two one thousandths of a second and is extremely portable and works via Bluetooth and your smart device, then do get in contact with me. Likewise, if you'd like information on the NeuroCore MyTouch bioelectricity device which is great for recovery, injury, rehabilitation, sports massage and even the enhancement of sports performance then do get in contact.